I have dedicated my whole career to working in addictions. Uh, when I started my job as a consultant in the NHS, I was working in Paddington at St Mary's Hospital, uh, looking after people who injected drugs. And um, I was working from a caravan next to the large St Mary's Hospital. Um, later on, I worked at Soho a Rapid Access Clinic. I was running that clinic for homeless uh, addicts in central London and moving later to an inpatient unit where I was detoxing people from alcohol and drugs, the change to behavioural addictions was a radical one. It was one that uh, took place following a significant amount of research I did uh, in, on my doctorate thesis for Imperial College when I did my neuroscience doctorate there. I realised that I had developed a very specific interest in behavioural addictions, in gambling disorder particularly, and that I had identified the need for a NHS clinic because there were no NHS clinics in the whole country at the time of my research. And therefore, it was really when I was advising the government on behalf of the Royal College of Psychiatrists as what should happen in relation to uh, stopping any further casinos, any, any gambling venues from opening, and if they were to open, if the government was to open these uh, further casinos as they were threatening to, what would the consequences be? Well, potentially, uh, the more you have availability of a product, the more people use it, the more people might be detected who have an issue with it, in this case, gambling. And that was a time when I really felt uh, clinics would be needed and when I started the, um, uh, the opening of the first clinic. Soon after that, uh, pretty much in the first month, I, I felt very driven using my research background at Imperial to uh, record the presence of these patients, not just in relation to their clinical presentations, but far more information that I could then use to truly understand illness and its manifestations, particularly in the UK, because it's very easy to talk about a disease globally and say, well, you know, the Americans or the Japanese are seeing this, so it must be the same here. No, because gambling forms change, and indeed vulnerabilities and individual stories change. So I wanted to understand what the UK patients, what the English patients had uh, problems with, what types of products, and then uh, what I wanted to do was to understand whether there were some products that were more harmful than others, and use our expertise to inform policy, to inform government as to what might be toxic to the general population. And that includes uh, understanding early life vulnerabilities, exposure to gambling in relation to parental gambling, in relation to the genetics of gambling. We know, for example, that half of our patients um, had parents who gambled uh, and, uh, and, and who were problem gamblers. Many more than 50% had patients who gambled. So we know that there are those transmission here, uh, both in terms of family environment and genetic, and that these transmissions do play a part in determining vulnerability. So it's not just a neurobiology of vulnerabilities, such as a ventral medial prefrontal cortex uh, being uh, less than fully working, as well as in peers who do not develop gambling disorder. We know impulsivity is at play here. We know our gamblers are, are very highly um, impulsive in relation to other addictions and in relation to the general population. So uh, those kinds of research have been happening throughout the last uh, 15 years, and they've informed the way we treat our patients, the way we understand our patients, and the way we can communicate with them about risk, about their children potentially being at risk, and the way we help families, spouses deal with the actual patients themselves. The book has been written by a large number of people who have worked at the clinic. So I last counted about 150 people who have been through our doors and who have worked with our patients with gambling disorder. Uh, several of those have written chapters. They're mainly psychologists, but also family therapists and psychiatrists. 
Some of the people who wrote were people who have worked at the clinic for years and others were there for a very specific special interest, such as some of the psychiatric trainees.